Eternal and gracious Lord, we come to you on this day, God, a day that we've never seen before. A day, God, that you've allowed us to wake up, oh God, with the activities of our limbs, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you have allowed us to gather to your house to worship you in spirit and in truth. So, God, we thank you, oh God, that your spirit is here in the house, oh God. Amen. I thank you for your word. I thank you for its power, oh God. I thank you for your spirit. Now, Lord, I pray right now, oh God, that you may give me articulation of speech and clarity of mind to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and let every believer heart say amen. 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 Now, hold you long today. I have to give a big shout out to Mayfield Zion. Thank you so much for, for all that you do, who you are. Come on, give yourselves a hand. So, 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 and to our visitors from Knoxville, Tennessee, and from Florida. Come on, come on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I don't know if Tennessee won, but I know Florida lost yesterday. So, so I, I thank Sister Kelly and, and you know and the brother for being here. I know it, it was probably hard for you, but but I got news for you. You know, life is not over. Life is not over. Amen. I'm not saying not to keep it long. If you want to look at a very familiar verse, look at that. If you have your Bibles, your smartphones, if you can turn Proverbs 18, verse 21. Proverbs 18, verse 21. A verse that we all know and that we've all quoted many, many times. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it shall eat its fruit. I like that. that that's it right there. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it shall eat its fruit. For just a few moments, I want to put a tag on that text and preach on the topic. I've got something to say. Yeah. I've got something right. to say. You just do your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I've got something to say. I've got something to say. Find another neighbor. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Your voice is the key to your breakthrough. To your breakthrough. Okay. I've got something to say. My beloved brothers and sisters, let me ask you a question. What are you telling yourself? Look out, man. Let me say that again. Ask you that again. What are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself something good each and every day? Or are you telling yourself doubt and uncertainty each and every day? Right. In a real sense, we have the power to build up as well as to tear down. So again, I'm asking, my, asking you the question again. What are you telling yourself? And uh, what, what, what words are you allowing to come into your spirit? What are you feeding your mind? What are you telling yourself? I'm not worried about what other people are telling you because other people may like you. They may not like you at all. They, they'll tell you anything to make you happy. But it's more important, what are you telling yourself? Are you waking up in the morning giving God praise, honor, and glory? In addition to giving God all praise, honor, and glory, are you telling yourself how good you are? Are you telling yourself that you are bad mamma jam? Are you telling yourself I'm all that in a bag of chip or water? I know we live in a world, Brother Wilson, whereby too many people don't want us to brag on ourselves and talk good to ourselves. But I got news for you. If you don't talk good to yourself, about yourself, how are you supposed to feel good about yourself? Let me say that again. We, uh, we're living in a world whereby too many people are stuck on social media on pants. They, they're looking for validation on Instagram. They're looking for validation on Facebook or how they look, what they wrote, what they say, without looking into the mirror and saying, I'm all that and, and then some. Why? Because I'm a child of Almighty God. And because I'm a child of Almighty God, <coughs> I know I am created for great things. That's right. Man. So again, I'm asking yourself the question. What are you speaking to yourself? One of the things I love doing um, throughout the week, I love reading books that, that stretch my mind and challenge my intellect. And, and my wife, Kimberly, she was watching video of that preacher that we all know. If anyone over the age of 40 knows this particular preacher, he graced the airwaves named Reverend Ike. We all heard of Reverend Ike and, and, and Kim was watching a video and I overheard some of the things that he was saying and then she purchased a book called 
Reverend Ike's secrets for health, joy, and prosperity for you, Reverend Williams. And I'm reading it, and one of the things that struck and arrested my attention, Sawana, was that this man gives affirmations and statements that always makes you feel good. I'm loving that because it helps to help, help to illustrate the sermon. And in other words, what we're telling ourselves will help open doors for us or keep doors closed. Right. I think I need to say that again. That's the right. question is, what do you want in this world? What do you really want to become? What do you want to accomplish? Right. Whatever you want, whatever you want to accomplish, you must speak it for yourself. Right. The Bible says, death and life from the power of the tongue. Right. And those those who love it eats its fruit. Perhaps too many people are stuck in a bad situation because they haven't opened up their mouth. Mm. Right. Or, or when they have opened up their mouth, they open up their mouth with doubt and confusion, hesitation and procrastination. But I'm here to let you know that I've got something to say. Because when you've got something to say, you're going to start speaking with assurance. You're going to start speaking with confidence. You're going to start speaking not hoping and wishing, but you're going to start speaking as those things that they are because you serve a God that says, you know, the whole world belongs, the whole earth is the Lord and the forms of those there. Because we're a child of Almighty God, when we make our petition to God, we're making our petition to the source and resource. Well, you're not feeling me. In this particular book, I just talked about, it has the chapters here, Root for Yourself. I'm loving that, Reverend Wood, because he says you have to root for yourself. You have to make positive affirmations to yourself for those things that you want, those things that you need, and those things that you desire. Not only must you root for yourself, but you must go from ordinary to extraordinary. Who am I talking to right now? That you want the extraordinary things in this life. You just don't want the average. You just don't want to settle for settling it, but you want the extraordinary. And I got to stop here right now. I'm about to bowl down somebody's alley because we've been in church for way too long to keep saying the same thing over and over again. When someone asks you the question, what do you want to be? Oh, I just want to be a child of God. You already a child of God. What do you want to be in this world? Stop giving a mammy pamby answer. You've got to be specific with God because God will open doors for you when you get specific. That's why the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. The question is, do you want life or do you want death? Do you want prosperity or do you want poverty? Uh, I'm right there because for so long, people, too many people in church like to have this poverty mentality. Oh, I'm just making it day by day. I'm living day by day. Now, nah, baby, if God has blessed you with life, if God has this spirit in you, you ought to want the best of everything. I want the best house. I want the best car. I want the best job. I want the best family. And how do we get it? By opening up our mouth because we've got something to say. And when we got something to say, that means we're getting God's attention. But I got to let you know here, if people can't handle with what you got to say, every now and again, you say, I'm going to pray for you, but i see you when I see you. I got places to go, people to meet, and things to do because I can't get stuck on a poverty mentality. I can't get stuck on an average mentality because I don't serve an average God. And because I don't serve an average God, I don't want to average anything. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't want to average anything. Amen, amen. That's why you got to say, I've got something to say. Because when people, you got to get specific. And when you get specific, then guess what? God can open the doors for you. And the question is, how specific do we want to be in this life? How specific do we want to be with God? And I promise you, if you get specific with God and believe it in your heart, believe it in your mind, then guess what? God will open doors for you. God will make ways out of no way. God is your source and your resource, but you can't get if you don't open up your mouth. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Why? But you got to ask. That means you got to verbalize 
recognize it, and you got to keep on going after it, and you got to keep on knocking on the door with prayer. Say, God, I know you promised me all things. God, I know you could do all things but fail. That's why we quote the scripture, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is that just a cute phrase? Or do we really mean it? And we really mean it, then we're going to walk it. We're going to talk it. And we're going to believe it. We're going to profess it that you know what? I can do all things. Which means age ain't nothing but a number. I'm sorry, I got school teachers here, bad things, but I got to say it like a really good Age ain't nothing but a number. If God can use a hundred year old Abram, why can't he use you? Right. If God can use a young David, why can't he use you? Right. If God can use a, a, a 90 year old Sarah, why can't he use you? Amen. If God can use a young Mary to give birth to Jesus, why can't he use you? The question is, we have to position ourselves and understand that death and life are the power of the tongue. Which means what I speak, what you and I speak, is either going to come to fruition or not. The choice is not my neighbors. The choice is not my family. The choice is mine. Okay, okay, let me help you out. I wasn't going to go in there because it's not in the sermon yet, brother. You're saying you, you come here, you're selling me. I like that. You was cool. But you know what? Next time you come up, you don't say if you want to buy, say, look, I have meat for you. You come confidently. You don't say if you want to buy because if you say if, that means I can say yay or nay. You stand up and say, this is my name. This is what I do. I got what you need. You need to see me right now. Yes. Don't give people an option. If you want them to get your product, you tell them. You need to see me. That's the life from the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat it through get it. If you need God to show up in your life, you speak that blessing to God. And when you speak it to God, then you believe in God for it. Now, I'm going to give you two and we out of here because I know somebody wants to see the game. But don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'm not going to keep you off. The first thing you need to understand is that use our voice to affirm and even define ourselves for ourselves. We have to use our voice to affirm ourselves right. and define ourselves. You know, I believe it was that West African uh, proverb I'm passing that says, and I'm here, a lion's story, that the, the story of the lion will all, if it's given to the hunter, will always be uh, in, in the eyes of the hunter. The lion has to tell its own story. Because if the lion doesn't tell its own story, the hunter will, the hunter will always write the story. And if you know what happens, the hunter will always write in his favor and not in the lion's favor. Right. In other words, what I'm simply saying, you have to write your own story. You have to write your own narrative. You have to write what you want. So here's your assignment. Go home tonight. Make a list. Write it down. Put it on your on your phone. Put it on your iPad. Put it on your computer. Write down what you want. Be as specific as possible. Write it down. Write your own narrative. And then you got, once you write, then I need you to speak it for 30 days. Speak it. I want this. I want this. I want this. I'm expecting. Just write it down. Write it down. Create your own narrative. But you're not telling me if there's a show. There's a show Kim and I was watching the other day. Remember, Kim, it was called Boston Legal. Boston Legal. Boston Legal was a law show with William Shatner and I think James uh, James Spader. And it was a legal show and it was so good, Sister Pansy, that, that William Shatner, was, he, his character was called Denny Crane. He's a lawyer and he told his lawyer, he said, the reason I'm always winning is because I always paint the narrative. Mm -hmm. He said, I've never lost a case because I'm always painting the narrative. I'm always telling the media what the story is. I'm always telling people what the story is. In other words, I'm not going to let other people define the story. I'm going to have the story myself. So with that said, the question I want to pose is, what story are you going to give people today? Will you give your story or will you let other people give your story? Because if other people give your story, it will be death and a period. But when you give your story, there's life and a comma. You know the comma continuation. Where I am now is not where I'm going to be tomorrow. Where I am now is holy ground. But I heard the sermon today that says I got something to say. So guess what? So next week, next month, and next year, I'm going to be a lot better than I was today because I made up my mouth to use my 
my voice to affirm myself and to define myself for myself. Well, <clears throat> well the last thing that you got, last thing I want to talk to you about is that you have to speak what you want. That's right. Mm. We, we have to eliminate the hope and wish. That's it. That's it. Well, I, I hope this. Mm -hmm. I wish yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Nuh uh. I'm a child of God, and God is living in me. And because I got the presence of God living in me, what I speak is what I want. I don't say, I hope that, I wish that, because when my will is connected with my God's will, guess what? Everything I speak is going to come to pass. I wish I had a witness that, that when I speak is going to come to pass, because I know who I am, but I also know tools I have. Well, look, I'm done right now. I got to give an analogy, and my wife loved I preached it at a church years ago. You remember Muhammad Ali, you know the champion, the greatest champion ever. Muhammad Ali was going off to Zaire to fight George Frazier. I believe it was, it was a fight in Zaire, Brother Wilson. And while Ali was there, people cheering for George Foreman. But when Ali showed him, Ali would beat on the drum. The champ is here. The champ is here. Now, for those of you who don't understand, Ali wasn't the champ at that time. He was the challenger. George Foreman was the champ. But Ali came in. The champ is here. The champ is here. In other words, I may not have the belt wrap now, but when I'm stepping into the ring, I'm already calling myself the champ. And because I'm calling myself the champ, I'm going to act as the champ. I'm going to walk as the champ. I'm going to talk like the champ. Why? Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it shall eat its fruit. So I double dare you when you get home. Be on the death. The champ is here. The champ is here. Ladies, when you go home to your husband, say, the champ is here. The champ is here. Brothers, when you go home to meet your boo, the champ is here. Brothers, when you go to school on Monday, the champ is here. And they're going to look at your face and say, what you mean? The champ is here. You tell them, I'm speaking what I am. And because of what I am, you understand that. The champ is here. Why? Because I've got something to say. Right. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Right. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you for this day. God, we thank, thank you Lord. for yes, Lord. this opportunity. God, we thank you, God, that our words have power. Yes. And Lord, because our words have power, God, I'm praying right now, God, for some brother, some sister who does not know you for a part of their sins, that God, that you may speak to them, God, in such a way that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that is you calling them to step up, stand out, come and give their life a heart to you. So Lord, I'm speaking to someone right now, God. I pray, Lord, that you may whisper, God, into their spirit, oh God, the time for salvation. Or Lord, there may be somebody here today that doesn't have a church home. Yes, you may be far away, but don't worry about it. God can say, you know what, you can make Mayfield Zion your church home. Hey, I would love to be your pastor. I would, I would love to have you grow and develop into the person that God has called you to be. So if you're looking for a church home whereby you will be loved, you will be nurtured, you will be cared for, you will not be criticized, but you will be pushed, pushed to be all that God has called you to be on this call. Come on, make Mayfield Zion your church family. Or maybe there's somebody here today, right there. You say, Pastor, I'm saved. I got a church on. But you know what? I've been speaking the wrong stuff. I've been speaking too much doubt. I've been speaking too much foolishness. And from this day forward, I'm going to change my vocabulary. Who am I talking to? If I'm talking to you right now, why don't you come forth right now? Let me pray with you. And let me pray for you. Is there one? Is there one? 